Hi, my name is Kishan, and I'll be presenting our research on continual learning of object instances. Regulatory actions on data privacy and ever-expanding training data sets call for continual training approaches. In our research, we are interested in the re-identification task where given a query vehicle, we aim to identify it in a database. Our approach combines continual learning with metric learning. Metric learning approaches can't directly be integrated with continual learning. Additionally, they suffer from an unbounded loss function. In our approach, we adapt and benchmark, incorporate normalized cross-entropy, and apply synthetic transfer learning. We evaluate the forget ratio on three datasets and two backbone architectures. Our experiments show that existing continual learning approaches suffer from catastrophic forgetting and do not outperform naive approaches. Normalized cross-entropy and synthetic transfer help in forgetting less. Have a look at our paper for more details. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm going to present our work, Generative Feature Replay for Class Incremental Learning. Generative Image Replay is a popular strategy to replay synthetic images for class incremental learning, as shown on the left side. However, it yields unsatisfactory results for large datasets. In this work, instead of replaying images, we propose to replay features. To pre prevent forgetting in the feature extractor, we apply feature distillation. We have achieved state-of-the-art performance on large datasets such as image nets as shown in red lights. We only need 4.4 MB memory storage compared to exemplar-based method with 1.5 GB. Here we show the TSNE visualization of generated features and real features for 25 incremental tasks. They are very well overlapped. Here are the conclusions. Thanks for your attention. Code Hi, I'm Hong Zhilan, and this is joint work with my advisor, Tenshan Moon. Our paper is a simple classification balancing for incremental learning. We empirically find that the state-specific accuracy of vanilla fine-tuning does not drop drastically, but the prediction is biased toward new classes. We argue that the reason of this phenomenon is due to imbalance on mini-batch and softmax. In our work, we propose two simple modifications. The first thing is ratio-preserving mini-batch, which is just preserving the ratio of old and new classes. And the second thing is separated softmax layer, which is separating the softmax based on old and new classes. By using these two modifications, we aim to obtain a more balanced decision boundary. We carry out extensive experiments on large-scale datasets, and our work outperforms other baselines. Furthermore, our approach reduces pro prediction bias, and the logic distribution on output layer is more balanced. Please visit poster number 14 at 840. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sang Won Jung. This is joint work with Hong Junan, Sang Min Cha, and Tae Sun Moon. We are going to talk about adaptive gross sparse regularization for continual learning. In continual learning, there are two main sources for catastrophic forgetting, moral drift and negative transfer. Moral drift means the incoming weights of an important nodes get changed, and negative transfer means the interference of an important nodes. We can prevent these sources by considering the node-wise importance. Then we propose a novel method, AJCL. AJCL makes adaptive regularization parameters to measure the importance of nodes and separate the nodes based on their importance. Then AJCL applies gross sparse penalty to important nodes for model freeze and groom lasso to an important nodes for efficient learning. Proximal gradient descent is used to achieve exact sparsity and freezing. This is our contribution. AJCL achieves the state-of-the-art performance, first uses the adaptive gross sparse regularization with PGD and uses less memory. Thank you for listening and please come to our poster number 15 at 840. Today I'm going to present our work, CANNATE, a lifelong learning framework for egocentric gesture recognition. Egocentric gesture can be acquired by a hand-mounted RGBD camera, so we can get two different modalities data. One is RGB video and another one is depth video. These are very popular models in the area of video action recognition. And our work basically reuse the two-stream architecture as it can get two different modality data as an input and it also has very good performance. The current issue of such a pipeline is it doesn't support users to customize their own gestures. So the motivation of our work is to incorporate lifelong learning framework to the current model to make current model can learn new gesture continuously. This is our basic architecture. We incorporate IKL strategy to current two stream models so such a model can learn new gesture incrementally. More results can be referred to our paper and source code.
Hello, my name is Emmanuel Pachiras and I'm co-author of the paper Fusot Image Recognition for UAV Sports Cinematography. In this paper, we investigate the behavior of Fusot learning methods in the context of drone visual cinematography for sports event filming in order to recognize novel image classes utilizing only a handful of samples and the fact that this new class we wish to recognize is a subclass of an already known class. In our application scenario, we wish to recognize the ranking leader of second race Giro d'Italia namely Maya Rosa, using only a few recorded images and then training a CNN model that recognizes cyclist athletes in general. Using baseline methods, we noticed that the recognition of the novel subclass is greatly favored over the recognition of the base class. Our proposed approach enables the accurate recognition of both types of asset classes leaning toward the more balanced model. Hello everyone, I would like to introduce our work called Generalized Class Incremental Learning. The motivation of our work is to remove the limitations in existing class incremental learning settings to simulate more realistic scenarios. There are three major limitations in existing CIL. First, the number of classes in a phase is fixed. Second, the appearing classes in different phases are disjoint. Lastly, the sample size of different classes are the same. To this end, we propose to sample the class number, the appearing classes, and the sample size of a phase from three different distributions. Moreover, we also propose a method called Remix by utilizing exemplar replay and a regularization method called Mixup. Experiments on CIFAR demonstrate that uh, Remix outperforms state of art by 5 to 10%. For more details and analysis, you're welcome to come to our poster session. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Vincent Salomonaco and in this short video I'm going to tease your interest in our latest work, Gradual Free Continuum Learning over Small on ID Batches. This work is the result of a collaboration with Davide Maltoni and Lorenzo Pellegrini at the University of Bologna. So why should you read this work and what are its main contributions? First of all, uh, we define a more natural and complex scenario, NIC version 2, based on the Core 50 dataset and we introduce a new continuum learning strategy, Air One Star, for reactional free and task agnostic online continuum learning. Then we show, I guess, for the first time that continuum learning over small non-ID batches and natural video sequences is feasible even without reartial. So we invite you to check the main results in the paper that is freely available on archive. You can uh, get the link at the bottom of this line. Uh, and of course, if you have any question or interest in this work, contact us at vincenzo.lamonaco at unibo.it. Thank you for watching. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vincenzo Lamonaco and in this short video I'm going to tease your interest in our latest work, Continual Reinforcement Learning in 3D Non-Stationary Environments. So why should you read this paper? What are its main contributions? First of all, we designed and openly released a new benchmark, CRL Maids, based on VITS2 and for assessing continual reinforcement learning strategies in an always changing object picking task you can see at the bottom of the slide. Then we provided four different continual reinforcement learning baselines for each of the scenarios we propose where we change different things in the environment and then we proposed an end-to-end -end model free continual reinforcement learning strategy CRL and SOUP, uh, which is agnostic to the changes in the environment and does not exploit a memory replay buffer or any additional supervised signal. So we invite you to check the main results in the paper that is freely available on archive. Of course, if you have any question, contact us at vincenzo.lamonaco at unibo.it. Hi guys, I hope you're doing fine. I'm Wojtek and I would like to present you our joint work with Ivana about reducing catastrophic forgetting. This work was done during AI residency program at Tuplux. Methods recently proposed in continual learning field can be divided into three categories architecture modification, regularization and rehearsal methods. Our method tackles the problem of catastrophic forgetting from a different perspective by modifying data instead of a model. Specifically, we ask a question, is it possible to generate such data synthetically which learned in sequence does not result in catastrophic forgetting? To create such data, we modified the method of generative teaching networks. The results prove our point. It is possible to reduce the effect of catastrophic forgetting without modifying the model. The effect of learning on sequence of synthetic data is presented on the right. The plot on the left shows the robustness of generated synthetic data to the change of inner loop training parameters.